الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brothers and sisters, today we're going to show you around Masjid Imam al -Nawi. The Masjid was first opened in October 2020 Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Masjid And I'm going to show you around the Masjid as well How long have you been attending Masjid Imam al -Nawi? Since the lesson started, since the Masjid opened what changes have you seen in the masjid? It started off as a small group of brothers and the study I seen was teaching. There was no five daily prayers. Um, and then from there, it increased to the point that people were, couldn't even get inside the masjid. They're going to the other masjid, the local masjid, jumping on the lives to participate in the classes. Being from the local community, I can definitely say that it's definitely impacting the local community. What have you personally benefited from the masjid? So the classes have personally benefited me because prior to the masjid, Prior to the um, opening of the masjid, I wasn't seeking knowledge. Um, if anything, I had just come into that space and alhamdulillah, um, I found out about the classes that were going on here. Um, prior to the classes, it used to be a doxy, it used to be a madrasa where little kids would go in. And I used to go there as a kid, me and a friend and a few friends. And they were the guys that shouted at me saying, oh, the masjid's always oh, become a masjid now. And they're doing classes. Alhamdulillah, at that time, I was involved in some entrepreneurial endeavours and the class that they were doing was Kitab Boyo, so it made sense for me to come through. So um, I came through and initially I was only just focused on you know, learning the things that would aid me in that business. But then from that point onwards, um, a few brothers in the masjid that I'd met and had known from previously and I saw how they changed and I saw how their mannerisms had changed. Um, you know, a complete 360. I didn't recognise them in fact. They're sitting in the front row. Um, they had Arabic books in front of them, I couldn't believe it. And um, when, I saw that, um, when I saw them there, it got me thinking, how, how did you guys change like that? And um, they started pointing me towards these classes that were restarting, um, these fresh classes that were going to start um, here. And from there, I thought, well, I know. And then the rest is history. They've gone ever since. What's your favourite memory that you've got in this masjid? My favourite memory in the masjid? is the first Tarawih that we did. That's my favourite memory. Why? Um, it was the first Ramadan in the Masjid and I can't explain the vibe that was there, but it was, it was a lovely vibe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's the month of Ramadan. Uh, today is the night of Tarawih and there's brothers waiting outside the mosque, waiting to go in. But unfortunately, we had to tell them to 
go to another mosque because the mosque was very full. ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولهم عذاب عظيم ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله وباليوم الآخر وما هم يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء ومن يشرك بالله فقد ضل ضلالا بعيدا إن يدعون من دونه إلا إناثا وإن يدعون إلا شيطانا مريدا لعنه الله وقال لأتخذن من عبادك نصيبا مفروضا ولأضلنهم ولأمنينهم ولآمرنهم فليبتكن آذان الأنعام ولآمرنهم فليغيرن خلق الله ومن يتخذ الشيطان وليا من دون الله فقد خسر خسرانا مبينا وإذ قلتم يا موسى لن نؤمن لك حتى نرى الله جهرة فأخذتكم الصاعقة وأنتم تنظرون ثم بعثناكم من بعد موتكم لعلكم تشكرون وظللنا عليكم الغمام وأنزلنا عليكم المن والسلوى كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ وَإِذْ قُلْنَا ادْخُلُوا هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةَ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمْ رَغَدًا وَادْخُلُوا الْبَابَ سُجَّدًا وَقُولُوا حِطَّةٌ نَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ خَطَايَاكُمْ وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Changes have you seen in the masjid from when you first came to how it is now? Yeah, so the masjid has gone through a lot of improvements, alhamdulillah. As in, uh, I remember when there was no ACs in the masjid, uh, everyone was sweating and everything. The carpets are a lot better as well, alhamdulillah. Um, and for the brothers in Itikaf right now, they're enjoying the showers that they've recently put in. Um, I'm pretty sure last year it wasn't, the situation was a bit sticky. What have you personally benefited from the masjid? I remember um, the first lesson I attended, and this is, um, and it was a Kitab al Tawheed lesson about study scene. Um, I remember I was actually dragged to it, I didn't want to come. Uh, and um, I wasn't really um, like practicing back then. But alhamdulillah, since then, I remember I was sitting in the lesson, I was like, yo, I'm meant to be Muslim, and I don't even know what Tawheed is. Um, and since then, alhamdulillah, like, I try my hardest to keep coming to these types of lessons now. What's the brotherhood like in the masjid? <laughs> the brotherhood, um, you know what it is, yeah? When you start to love people for the sake of Allah, and these types of places, they help to foster that kind of connection. When you start to love people for the sake of Allah, it's no longer a kind of thing where, oh, uh, he's gonna go buy me something in the future, so let me make some connections with him. It's no, it's purely for the sake of Allah. And when you when you experience it, when you experience that, it's uh, it's an amazing thing. Well, like you don't um, 
you don't find that in places other than places like this. Uh, and I'd say even now, I've made like hopefully brothers that I can say that they will be with me till the day I die, inshallah. So to actually get to the masjid, first you need to get off the main road, come into Niskot Road and come through the alleyway here. And so here, this is the masjid, this is the brother's entrance, and for the sisters, the entrance is just a bit further down on that side. So okay, now let's enter the masjid. <laughs> this is a small shurak area for the brothers, and there's a big one downstairs. So here, this is, as you walk into here, on your left is the, the first musalli area for the brothers. This is where uh, the imam gives the khutbah, the, the imams, they leave taraweeh and the five salawat. And this is the first area which the brothers can pray in. As you can see, Alhamdulillah, some of the brothers are reciting Quran. As you know, because Ramadan is the month of the Quran. So, inshallah, I'm just going to show you the masjid storage area. As you can see, uh, it's quite small. The brothers have got to fit in a few things into here. A lot of things are stuck, like the books and you know, food and water and bottles for taraweeh. Now, I'm going to show you the downstairs, inshallah. Come with me down the stairs, bidnillah. As you can see, the stairs, this was awfully built by the brothers here. The wall, you guys, it was nicely uh, before. The stairs were really slippery, people kept on you know, tripping on the stairs, alhamdulillah. But the donations that people gave previously were able to make this firm and the brothers, they built this. Uh, alhamdulillah, now it's not the nicest firm, you can see uh, it's got the grips and everything, alhamdulillah. As you come down on your left, you'll see the shoe rack for the brothers to put their shoes. And alhamdulillah, uh, the brothers, when they come through here, you walk through here. Uh, and then this is the wudu area. Right now there's some cleaning going on, inshallah. Uh, but so this is the wudu area, this is where most of the water bills go to and you know, maintaining the wudu area. As you come through here... Oh, I think Madam is sleeping. So we, we need to be a bit quiet because the wudu is oh, hey, they're being sleeping inshallah, so we'll be a bit quiet. So this is the main area, this is where you see the clips of the lessons, uh, this is where the classes, the study of Sin and Shaykh Sa'id and the other Mashaykh. This is the area, this is the main area. And on the days of the lessons, you find that the lesson may start from over there and it'll spill all the way up to the front and up the stairs. Alhamdulillah, it just shows you the khayr, what's happening in the masjid. Uh, I'll show you around, but some of the brothers are sleeping. So, inshallah, we'll, we'll leave them to be. Brothers and sisters, this is the sister entrance of the masjid. As you can see, it's not fully finished. Uh, you can see that the walls, they've just been painted, but the stairs themselves, well, I've tripped maybe twice or three times while I'm coming up. Uh, and so this is one of the things that your donations will be going to. This is one of the things that, inshallah, we'll be fixing. Inshallah, we'll make it more safe, as you can see. You know, there's no, there's no lighting here as well. So when after Maghrib, becomes hard for the sisters. Sometimes they fall down. So inshallah, this is one of the things that your donations will be going to. Jazakallah khair. How long have you been attending Masjid Imam al before? Um, I'd say for a year and a half. Alhamdulillah, I've been attending the Masjid. And what changes have you seen in the masjid from when you first started attending to now? Well, I have seen many changes. I've, I've seen the masjid go from just a few brothers coming, uh, benefit from uh, Ustad Yassin's lessons, to the masjid getting so packed that people who are actually early or who are actually on time get having to get sent away. What's the brotherhood like in the masjid? Uh, I'll be honest, the, the brotherhood is like no other, to be honest. Alhamdulillah, there's brothers from all over who come together study together, uh, you know, um, go on trips together, and well, like, this is amazing. To be honest, it, 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 it's, when you look at the masjid, it's amazing in a way because a lot of brothers, when they, let's say, we're outside the masjid, for example, and you see a new brother, you can see he's new, he's looking around the road to try to find the masjid. When you show him the masjid, he's shocked. He can't believe that all those lessons and all those videos and all those recitations and stuff getting churned out from this small place. I started coming to the masjid last uh, year summer as well, but I was a bit lazy with it. I only started practicing then, around then, so I wasn't, I wasn't too consistent. And after that, when Ustaz Saeed Hassan started his lessons, then I started coming more consistently. And it's a, it's a big brotherhood, man, alhamdulillah, and I love it. I love coming to the masjid. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, I do. 
You go and do it. Say next person. Go on. What did you first come to the masjid? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, oh, right, hold up. I'll do it. It's a quick one. So basically, started coming from last year to myself, but then Ramadan, didn't it? I came through. Obviously, um, a couple brothers uh, just told me about it, innit? So I came through, never knew about it. And um, Nietzsche started pr- praying uh, Tarawah here for the month, obviously. And yeah, really. And then, obviously, as the months uh, got on and that, um, the brothers told me about the lessons, seeking knowledge and that. And I've come through a bit, uh, a bit but when I have time, I always try to come through, but yeah, literally. It's the fact that not only with the masjid obviously is quite small, but there's multiple people that are coming from different parts of the um, city, different parts of the country, even. Alhamdulillah. So it's really important that even though we're such a small masjid, we're growing by the day. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, well, like, when I first started coming, the only thing that I actually knew properly was what thobe size I was, what thobe size I was. So Alhamdulillah, from there it was only onwards and upwards, and it was beautiful. There was no judgment in this masjid at all. There was only khair and there was only love, there was only salams and there was only smiles. Alhamdulillah, every single time I come here, I live a better person. Alhamdulillah, for me, I wasn't really living the best life before. And when I started coming to the masjid, I feel like this masjid especially, I've been to a lot of masjid in the past and the brotherhood hasn't, hasn't really been the same. And I feel like with this masjid, not that, not that people are the same age as me, but I feel like just come, just coming to the masjid and knowing that there's, there's people that, that are on the same wavelength as you, that, that only started practicing recently and I feel like coming to the masjid a lot has taught me that you to take criticism and when someone tells you this is wrong and it showed me how ignorant I was as well because I didn't know how to make wudu, I didn't know how to pray properly and even though I thought I knew how to make, knew how to make wudu, it wasn't proper. From the time I started going to the masjid, I feel like it's, it's, it's saved my life in a, in a sense where if, if I didn't start coming to the masjid, I don't know what would have happened to me in the future. I obviously, so my story all started off from obviously when I was around like 17, uh, six, actually 16 when one of my family members, uh, that relative, passed away in it. And obviously, like, I wasn't a bad kid. It wasn't um, as if I was a bad kid or anything, but it made me realise a lot. Because as he died, and we did the khusl, wash his body and everything, and I really looked at him deeply, then it made me, it made me think about life uh, properly. Putting the, um, put, uh, wrapping up his body, burying him everything, just made me deep a lot. And once that everything happened, once we buried him, I uh, once we buried them obviously it just made me think about life literally for months and months and months I was thinking about it and deepening about it, deepening about it. And obviously as I got back now, just started to come to the masjid more. Obviously lessons, seeking knowledge. And Alhamdulillah, I'm grateful for everything in it. I'll tell you that I'm very grateful. All these brothers here obviously, I'm grateful for meeting them too. And yeah man, that's literally my little life of yeah. Um, obviously I've got the brothers here with me, you know what I'm saying, they're all making me smile all the time and always literally, like, my dad here is always giving me lots of advices, which is obviously very important in life and yeah man, that's it really, alhamdulillah, that's all I can say, I'm grateful now. message to people watching this that are considering donating what they're a little bit iffy what would you say to them that if you gave only one pound just one pound it may be the difference between you having uh, suffering the punishment of the grave or for you to for your grave to become a, a paradise from the paradises of jannah and for the doors of paradise to be open for you in the grave the message is changing lives with the permission of allah um the message is changing lives and um with the donations, we'll be able to keep the masjid going. We'll be able to um, improve the masjid, you know, develop the staircase. We'll be able to um, fund more classes, alhamdulillah, continue the curriculum and benefit more people and grow the community even more. Um, so definitely no brainer. The message I'd give is that, is to think about where we're going to. The fact of the matter is that we're going to go to a place, inshallah, we hope that Allah will take us to Jannah al-Firdaus al-A'la. The, the, it will last forever but that won't come easily and the fact of the matter is a lot of the actions that we think that will take us to Jannah uh, we, 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 we often associate hardship with them but this is one of those small actions that if you do a little bit it will come back to you ten, hundred times, million times even more as in think about how many people are studying here 
me myself, like, I started coming to these lessons and now, alhamdulillah, I'm leading Taraweeh here. Imagine the person that has given money for these masjids, every single re reward I do myself, they will get for that. It makes me kind of jealous, Allah. I wish I could hold that reward for myself. <laughs> Wallahi, I could tell them, just donate because for the for the, for how the masjid looks and what's been put on the masjid up until now has been self-funded. Alhamdulillah, we have no debts. Uh, I mean, how can you not want to donate to a place like this? Somewhere that's so small, but the, the masjid's name is actually bigger than the masjid, if that makes sense. And uh, f for you to donate, Allah, you don't know how many brothers you're helping. We have brothers from all walks of life, brothers who are on the streets, revert brothers, brothers who were disconnected from their deen, who actually came back to Allah by the will of Allah, Alhamdulillah. So, Donate, inshallah, it won't be going to a bad place. I can assure you that. So my first time at Masjid Imam Nawawi was last night. But I swear it feels like I've been here for a lot longer. And the brothers, wallahi, were extremely, extremely welcoming and made me feel at home. In fact, I feel like I'm part of the Masjid. You know, already, alhamdulillah, I was volunteering, helping out in the Masjid. And uh, the masjid has a very, very cosy vibe. All the brothers seem to know each other. You know, I've seen a lot of familiar faces from the past and a lot of new faces also. And I can't lie, Alhamdulillah, Wallahi, the vibes in this masjid are without a shadow of a doubt. Some of the best vibes I've experienced in any masjid, in any of the masjid that I've been to. And I, I, I don't say that lightly. And, you know, I don't feel like leaving. That's why I decided I'm going to stay overnight in the masjid with the brothers because Wallahi, I don't feel like leaving this masjid and one thing that really hit me and shocked me was how small the masjid actually is when you compare it to the effect that the masjid has when you compare it to the online presence of the masjid when it comes to the classes, when it comes to the brotherhood when it comes to the community and yet the masjid itself SubhanAllah can fit maybe 75 to 100 brothers you know, we were at the Tahajjud and at Taraweeh They had to turn people away You know, I said, I've never seen that before Usually it's the first hall gets full Send them to the second hall, or send them upstairs, send them upstairs Here there's only two rooms And one of them is tiny And it really, really shocked me, I can't lie to you And Alhamdulillah, you know, I came earlier on today I spent some time with the brothers We broke our fast together Brothers were reciting Qur'an Then Taraweeh was, uh, was, was, Allah Mubarak, it was powerful and then, you know, one of the key components that the masjid really focuses on is knowledge and that was evident, you know, uh, Sheikh Saeed Hassan came and he gave a reminder between the taraweeh prayers Let's not forget to make dua for the management of the masjid the volunteers and the brothers that are working hard working day and night so that for, for our comfort to be honest, if you look around London and maybe over in the UK you won't find the masjid like Masjid al Nawawi. You won't find a masjid in which the shabab are the ones that are taking lead and the shabab are the ones that are doing everything and with all um, efficiency as well. And one thing that shows you that the brothers were quick to implement the knowledge that they learnt was that he was talking about the importance and the virtuous actions to do on the odd nights of Ramadan. And one of the things that he mentioned was obviously Qiyam al-Layl which we were doing and he mentioned reciting the Qur'an. The second type of ibadah that, sh that is strongly recommended for this night is reading the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an Shahr Ramadan is the shahr, is the month of the Qur'an It is the month that the Qur'an was revealed So we have to make sure that we finish the Qur'an at least two, three, four times in the month of Ramadan Wallahi, I remember I was outside, I came inside after the, the, uh, the taraweeh finished I walked inside Every single brother was sitting there reciting Qur'an Every single brother was sitting there implementing that which they learned a few moments earlier And that's, you know, the brothers in this masjid, mashallah, they're eager, they're keen to learn This is a masjid full of khair, wallahi And you don't know your donation, how far it will go I can honestly say, tonight was the best Qiyamul Layl I've ever prayed in my life I've prayed in many masajid up and down the country I've prayed abroad in other Muslim countries Wallahi, I swear by Allah, this was the best Qiyamul Layl I've ever prayed in my life. And one thing that came to my mind, the Imam who was reciting Surah Yusuf, 
And one of the things that was, you know, one of the ayat that was mentioned was how Yusuf when he was sold. He was sold by the slave traders to the Aziz for a very small amount. The Aziz and his wife had no idea of the value of what they were buying. They bought a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a very small amount of money. Brothers and sisters, you could give something, one pound, five pound, ten pound, a small amount for the sake of Allah to this masjid. But Allah, you don't know the value of that which you're, you know, what you're getting. What you're getting ultimately, I promise you, is going to be more than what you give. Charity does not decrease your wealth. So with that said, brothers and sisters, I implore you, you know, the masjid, they're trying to fundraise to cover their rent and costs from this Ramadan up until the next Ramadan. Imagine you get the reward of every single class, every single salah, every new connection, all the new brotherhood that happens, you will get a share of the reward if you click the link below and donate generously. Fi sabilillah. May Allah bless you all and hopefully inshallah the brothers will be seeing a lot more of you in the masjid. If you're in East London, you've got no excuse. I want to see you guys inshallah in Masjid Imam al Nawi, Hackney, East London. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi al-sami' al-alim min al-shaytan al-rajim Ya ayyuhal al-lazina amanu anfiqu mimma razaqanakum anfiqu mimma razaqanakum min qabl an yatiya yawmun la bay'un fihi wa la khullah ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول رب لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكم من الصالحين فاتقوا الله ما استطعتم واسمعوا وأطيعوا وأطيعوا وأنفقوا خيرا لأنفسكم وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ إِنْ تُقْرِضُوا اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا يُضَاعِفُهُ لَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ شَكُورٌ حَلِيمٌ لَنْ تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ ما تحبون لا تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء وما تنفقوا من شيء فإن الله به عليم لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء مرضاة الله وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ بَتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ فَسَوْفَ يُؤْتِيهِ أَجَرًا عَظِيمًا